Dr. Desai, and I'm one of the docs here at Capital Pain Institute. I'm going to talk to you today about EMG nerve conduction studies. What do these letters mean, and when are these studies indicated? So here we have an EMG machine, and I'm going to be demonstrating some different parts of this machine to you throughout this video. So you've just been told by your provider that you need an EMG study. What does this mean? This short video will help you get a better understanding. So what is this test? It's a two-part test. The NCS, or nerve conduction studies portion, basically tests the activity of your nerves. The EMG portion, which is the second part, actually tests the electrical activity of your muscles. So why do we do this study? Well, this study allows us to see if your nerves are functioning normally. So when do we consider ordering this study? Well, there's several scenarios. You may present to your doctor's office and say, I'm having numbness or tingling in my arms or my legs. I'm having shooting pain in some part of my body, muscle weakness, or just an abnormal sensation. These are all indications for us to do an EMG nerve conduction study to see what's going on. So what are common indications for the nerve conduction EMG study? Well, one of the most common is to rule in or rule out carpal tunnel syndrome, which is entrapment of the median nerve at the wrist. Other conditions that we can rule in or rule out are radiculopathies or pinched nerves in the low back. These are just two among the many conditions that can be determined with this study. So when you show up for this exam, what can you expect? Well, first, the physician is going to take a clinical history from you. The importance of that is because certain medical conditions can be associated with nerve damage. Next, you will have, we will perform a very brief physical exam on you, which includes testing your strength, your reflexes, and your sensation. The purpose of doing that is to determine how exactly to tailor the exam for you. After the history and physical, the physician will ask you to lay down on one of the exam tables, and then he or she will take one of these electrodes and attach them to your leg on different locations over the nerve. We, we use an adhesive sticker that you see here to attach the electrodes. The reason why this is important to point out is because if you come in with lotions or oils on your arms or legs, it becomes very difficult for these adhesive stickers to stick. So we'll talk later on about how you can prepare for this exam. Next, we take this electrical stimulator and we apply it on certain areas of your leg to test how exactly the nerve is conducting. Many patients describe this feeling as walking on the carpet and getting a small tingling sensation. Here on the computer screen, you can see an example of a normal waveform that the provider may see here. Each provider has different variables that they use to determine what is considered normal. So after the nerve conduction portion, which involves the stimulator, we start the second part of the test, which is called the needle electromyography, or EMG. For this portion of the exam, we take a small acupuncture type pin that you see here, and we insert it into various muscles that we are testing. You may notice that after that, the provider will ask you to move your leg or arm in a certain way so that we can test the muscle. Again, the level of discomfort for this part of the test has often been discussed as being very mild. There's no long-term side effects. So what are the risks of the nerve conduction EMG study? Well, the risks include minimal bleeding, and beyond that, there's actually very few risks and very few long-term side effects. So in summary, when do we consider this study? Well, if you feel like you have numbness or tingling in any part of your body, arms or legs, if you have pain in your low back and you're concerned about what the etiology or cause of this could be, if you have any sort of weakness in your limbs or muscle wasting, these are all conditions in which you, you can bring up doing an EMG study or a nerve conduction study with your provider. So now for you, how should you prepare for this study? Well, before the test, Make the physician aware if you have a pacemaker, if you have any sort of bleeding disorder such as hemophilia, 
or if you're on a blood thinner. Also, please let us know if you have an open area of infection on the area that's going to be tested. On the day of the test, please shower and bathe as you normally would. And again, avoid putting any lotions or oils on the area being tested as it makes it very difficult for the adhesives to stick to the area. Also, continue to eat and drink as you normally would and continue to take all of your regular medications, including your pain medications. The day of the exam, please dress in loose, comfortable clothing, such as t-shirt and shorts, so that the area can be exposed and easily accessible for the provider. During the test, plan to be at our office between 30 to 60 minutes. The examination will be tailored to you so this time can be variable. At the end of the study, the physician will give you preliminary results and then refer you back to the provider who had ordered the examination. That provider will then determine what's the next step in your treatment. Again, you can resume your normal activities there's minimal long-term side effects and uh, there's minimal discomfort noted with this study. Finally, who performs this study? Well, uh, board certified physicians such as myself who specialize in physical medicine and rehabilitation are among the common providers who do this study. In addition, neurologists may do this study as well. Please feel free to refer back to our website for any additional information in regards to nerve conduction EMG studies. Again, I'm Dr. Anjali Desai and it was great speaking with you. Feel free to contact our office with any other questions.